Jesus, I love how annoyed Ryan's going to be this entire episode. This is awesome, man. Every fucking light a has to be in its perfect fucking place. Hey, man. People aren't here for the lights. Nope. I'm here for the comedy. No, you know who they're really here for? Who's that? They're here for the internet influencer. The fucking... 13-inch cock haver. Well, I don't know about all that. <laughs> put it on Facebook. I mean, you you can speak on that. You put it on Facebook. You put, it on, you put a drawing on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Right, that's it. That's my reference. The Dynamo stand-up comedian. <laughs> uh, the fucking uh, uh, Dewey. What was it called? The Super Dewey. He, the, he's a Super Dewey. Okay? You think you go Super Saiyan? He goes Super Dewey. Okay? Of course, I'm talking about my good friend, Joey Purse. Welcome, my friend. What up? What up? This is your second time on, right? Yes. Yes. And last time, we thought we were going to trash comedy in our local scene, but we didn't. We did not. We, we <laughs> gave them a stay of execution. Um, welcome to the Corey Brennan Show. I'm, of course, Corey Brennan. Sitting two down for me, mm-hmm. Jay Bizzle. Ryan's sure. always behind the one to twos. And like I said, Joey Purse sitting right mm-hmm. in between us. This is what a regular size human, by the way, looks like. <laughs> like, I understand, like, me, sometimes JB and I look make ourselves look kind of normal, yeah. this is normal. <laughs> this is reality right now. <laughs> this is what it is, man. What's up, buddy? How you doing? I'm talking to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm all right. Just, I came straight from work. I haven't, wasn't home today. You haven't been home today at all? Nope. You woke did a up. set, though. Yeah, I woke up, went to work, went to the mic. Yeah, see. With the two mics came here. <laughs> I, you did two mics? Yeah. What's the first one you did? Bing Cam, Big Cam Tavern. Wow, how was that? Be honest. It was fun. Was Honestly, it? Yeah, both mics were fun. Um, cause like it doesn't matter how many people were there. There was like five people at the first one. Mm-hmm. Non, five non comics. You still have to make it fun for yourself. Mm-hmm. So, how do you do that? Tell me. I need to learn how to make it fun for myself. I just bring energy and fuck around. Mm. That's, that's it. Mm. Yeah, like if you stay low energy and you're trying to really focus on your material, of course it's not going to hit because you're not giving the audience anything to feed off of. But Yeah, you just do shots. Yeah. <laughs> 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 but if you're up there and you're just fucking around having fun with it, it the, the smaller audiences are going to feel the energy and they're going to have fun too. So. Yeah, I need to learn how to like open mics. <laughs> I don't think you ever do. <laughs> <laughs> it takes balls to, be, to do open mics, man. You, you, keep, you keep telling me to try it. It just, yeah. it's just different breed, man. I don't want to try it. I'm Why? Gonna, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of balls to do that shit, man. To land to, to land. You've jokes. been to an open honestly, mic, honestly. It does. It takes a lot to do them, but after you do it, it's just like fuck it. We here, like yeah, yeah. they're nothing that. after the first time. I yeah, I like the people who like. <laughs> Like not, I mean, uh, there's no bombing in open mic, but you know, like the people who get up and they just know they're gonna bomb and they're just like completely fine with it. Yeah. They just get off like, yeah, mm-hmm. be like that. Another day at the <laughs> office. <laughs> be like that. Because <laughs> uh, if you're I, too serious about it, you're you're not gonna have fun. You're gonna be yeah. pissed off. You gotta yeah. be like that sometimes. And mm-hmm. it's like you can't when there's two people in a crowd and you bomb. It's like you can't even consider that a bomb. It's just like. Yeah. <laughs> Like, cause two people, like, it's crazy. Like, I think it's easier to make 2,000 people laugh than two people. Oh, easily. Yeah, I can see that. If you got a crowd of 2,000, that. that's way easier than two people. But you have to master the two people crowd before you can master the 2,000. That's the thing. A guy mm-hmm. put it to me like this Chris Harvey, shouts out to Chris Harvey, headline a bunch of clubs and shit. Chris Harvey said, You're not considered good until you can perform the same in front of four people as you can in front of 400 people. Mm-hmm. And. It's deep. It is like facts. <laughs> Every time I get like less than ten people in front of me, I just start talking to them and like, like I remember like last time me and Joy went to a mic together. Mm-hmm. There's literally like two ladies in the crowd. Like one was like a really attractive like young girl and like mm-hmm. her mom, like quite clearly her mom. Yeah. And I just started asking the young hot one if she had only fans. <laughs> and she was like so awkwardly said no. I was like, Well you should <laughs> you see your tits. Use what you got, tit toots. T- I mean, toots. toots use the tits. I mean toots. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean it's true. It's true. Well now that I, oh yeah, we can talk about this. I know that I fucking work in an office. Mm-hmm. It's my very first fucking office get you ever work in an office? Hmm? Never have I. Ever. You never worked in an never. office? Mortgage. You worked in a mortgage office. Mm-hmm. What'd you do? Yeah, relax all that excitement. I, uh, I called. Um, I called around to make people's accounts. Uh, basically, free, make sure they're lean free. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's all I did. I didn't do shit. 
It's um, it's weird because I always worked in restaurants like my entire life, uh-huh. which is as unoffice as it oh, fucking yeah. gets. But the girl, I I work at a dealership. I do like, I basically call people and tell you your car is fucked. I gotta give people bad news all day. Be like, yeah, I know you thought it was a simple oil change. It turns out you need an engine. (laughs) The oil was the only good part about your engine. (laughs) Ironically. (laughs) Um, But I got in there and the lady training me, who she's fucking awesome. She's like, people are shit. Just so you know, what what do you know about people? Interrupts me. People are shit. <laughs> She's like, people come in here, they bring their fucking cars in here. They don't care. They think, what am I? What do you think I'm pulling par- car parts out of my pussy? I was like, oh my god, this is yeah, amazing. Like the woman version of Tony Soprano. Dude, <laughs> yes, this is a fucking. This is a hard ass bitch from Jeez. Butler. I'm also learning that in Butler, Pennsylvania, there's two body types. There is. <laughs> Crackhead skinny or Hummer. <laughs> there's crackhead skinny, or there's beluga whale. <laughs> there's no, there's no in between. There's the people who are taking all the food and the people who are only taking crack. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, I actually kind of like it. Like I like getting out and being like, let's go to happy hour. Mm-hmm. Oh, that shit. You all right? Yeah, cool. He's fucking checking himself out. I am. I'm trying to make sure my head don't look lopsided. <laughs> the, the, it, no, the head isn't lopsided. It's just the dewy. It, it, the, the, dewy. the dewy is what determines if the head looks even. <laughs> I was this close from wearing my, my lavender sweat um, dewy too. Because I know I know he was here. I was like, I had to rock the dewy for him. I was like, ah, I forgot. I couldn't find it. <laughs> couldn't find the shit. You got one that fits? Oh, all, yeah. all, the, yeah. all the locks? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, the majority of the locks stick out, but I mean, I got a nice little lavender jump, like Sway one. You look like Sway from like 2002? Uh, no, that's he's wearing a head wrap. I'm with a Dewey's, like actual what he has on. How do you, okay, from someone with a lot of locks, how did like Sway keep them all on top of his head? Like, how did he bounce? Because knowing shit? him, he probably, he probably just like tied it up with the actual rubber bands uh-huh. and then started like applying the wrap around his head. That's usually how, and then tucks it inside the crevices. That's what my mother does. She has, she has locks. That'd be like so bad for his neck. That'd be Possibly, heavy yeah. as fuck. Probably, yeah, yeah. Whenever I wear my hair up, it's fucking, it's terrible. Plus, I got a big ass fucking head, so that doesn't really help. So I heard, I heard that like if you let your dreads get too long and too heavy, it'll actually like pull your fucking forehead back. <laughs> That is overly. That is way. That's not. That's exaggeration. You you. Start, Someone told me that's what happened to Snoop Dogg. Well, Snoop Dogg <laughs> is yeah. Well, uh, the thing about having long locks, uh-huh. you start having you start the weight distribution is off. The ends of it start getting a lot heavier, okay. and the roots start thinning out. Mm. So that's why I literally had to cut off lately like three inches of hair this past couple months. Really, my thin my locks my my locks was so thick that they were getting so heavy, and they would start pulling at my roots. Damn. That's why, shit. that's why, yes, yeah, it's just fucked up, man. So what do the people do, like, in the mountains of Jamaica who just let that shit go, like, go to their They, they usually, they, they they don't, you don't, you don't see, like, manicure, like, locks from, from like, yeah, they're um, all, like Rastafari eyes. They, they, they're just, like, real flat. Yeah. Long, like, they, they, they use, like, beeswax. They just, that's just what it was. <sighs> it's different, man. Different breed out there. Yeah. That's I mean, the, those locks are probably kind of dreadful. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> By the way, do you know that? What? That's where the term dreadlock came from? Where? Yeah, White people went to like the islands and they all had their had their hair all dread, like locked up. See, I don't say dread no more. <laughs> they had their hair all locked up and they're like, "That's dreadful, dreadlocks." Yeah, those are, those are dreadful. I knew I knew dreads came from from white people. I didn't know like why though. You kind of oh, okay. I felt like you kind of had an idea though. <laughs> I, <laughs> it wasn't good. It wasn't yeah, good. I just knew it was supposed to be an insult. It, it, yeah, most definitely. Know. It definitely most wasn't. Definitely. In old English, dread means the high one. <laughs> like, that's what that, anything coming from white people back in the 18th century, yeah. not gonna be good. That just was all right. Yeah. Um, oh, speaking of you, you almost. Bro, there was almost a race war in a fucking high end f- restaurant. Ooh, me and this shit. dude, we went. Oh, we, me and this dude, we went to like a nice restaurant. Like I was talking about, man, this place got the best muscles. We should. We can we no, we, we we'll leave the restaurant. Oth. Out yes. So we went to this exactly. restaurant. I'm like, this place got the best muscles. Mm-hmm. Like, I never had. I'm like, let's fucking go. Right. Let's go fucking muscles. Too. So we're sitting at the bar, like not the regular clientele. <laughs> okay, like we're we are definitely like <laughs> one of these things is not like the other. Okay, <laughs> me and him sticking out. This really mostly me though. <laughs> mostly me sticking out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> um, <be> <laughs> so this like five two crazy ass white dude comes up. He puts his arm around both of us. He goes, 
<laughs> Whatever you guys are eating, that's what I need. Something stop me. I need to keep drawing. Da, 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 da. So he's talking. He wouldn't stop. So yeah, he he talked. He this dude, he his job was selling out arenas for self help talk. Like he would like sell out arenas for like Tony Tom Robbins and yeah. shit. Oh, shit. Yeah, so he's like a fucking charismatic as shit, dude. Anyways, so he's sitting next to us and he's talking about somehow race comes up. I don't know how the discussion of fucking race happens, but he's like, probably you brought it up, probably. Yeah, probably so he was like, um, he's like, yeah, man, like he's talking to JB's guy that self help shit. He goes, like we're all like one people, and like I just think like we're all brothers, and and like he's like, you know what I think? I was like, what? Send them all back? And he goes, <laughs> yeah, like reinstitute slavery. Like he like picked oh, up on what shit. I said the joke. And like pushed it, and JB was like, "The fuck you mean by that?" <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> and, and, he, and Corey likes to dampen the blow. Like, oh, he it's just calm. He gets it. He gets it. And little by there's some truth and some jokes. This motherfucker was well, saying that shit. And I left out. This dude was in a was in a improv group with Steve Carell in college. Seriously, so like, I didn't know that. He said that. Yeah, I wasn't listening to him. Okay, so he was like picking up like like when I was being super sarcastic, mm-hmm. like. Like, me and him are, like, racist to each other all the time as a joke. <laughs> but, like, he was picking up on the sarcasm and, like, one-upping it. Oh, but it's like, you don't know him like that. Slow it down, man. Like, he would, like, like he literally said, like, wow, oh, what did he say? Like, I don't like you people or something like that. He, like, said something. He said a lot of you people statements. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, JB, he's joking. He's yeah. joking. <laughs> Bro, you're going to fucking die. <laughs> he's, no, just he's joking. He's joking. <laughs> fucking relax, man. Relax. And there's two black dudes, like, three people down from me. I'm yeah. like, I'm like yeah. bro, yeah. you're going to die. Yeah, yeah. In, in a fucking five-star restaurant, <laughs> a race war. Man, that's fucking crazy, man. Yeah. What was yeah. his name? Miles. Miles the Midget. He wants to come on the fucking podcast. <laughs> like, I kind of want to have him on. but I like him. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. He said something about the Brazilians, though. He, he, yeah, he, I still like. He, it. he didn't seem like he was joking at all about those. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> but yeah, it's. Uh, I don't know how that even came up, but yeah. Uh, and then the last part, he said, "I usually don't hug." <laughs> oh yeah, we're leaving. He gives me a hug and he goes, "I usually don't hug black people." When I came in, I was like, hey, <laughs> "Yo!" And I shoved him off and said, wow. "Get your small ass off me, motherfucker." Ah, oh, it's jokes. Ah, oh, yeah, jokes. Jokes. Uh, like you can't what? just start off a relationship joking like that. No, you you have man. to get into a relationship. I don't you know can, you that well. Where you can joke, and then you have to be a person who just gets away with saying shit. Mm, fuck that guy. Which you can't be five two <laughs> and get away guy. with saying nothing. Nah, man. Yeah. No, fuck that guy. But anyways, so uh, what's new in your life, Joey? Not a damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's true. You you always got shit going on. You just fucking did the improv yeah. with Afion Crocker. How'd that go? That dope. Afion. Afion. My, my but, um, uh, I I was there Thursday and Sunday. Thursday was all right. Sunday uh, did not go too well. But why? What happened? Just Pittsburgh happened, bro. It was, <laughs> it, was it was a typical. It was a Pittsburgh. It was a typical Pittsburgh. Cra- it kind of honestly, it kind of let me down a little bit. Because I was thinking that I'm like, okay, it's it's the older white people, it's the mm-hmm. older white yinzers, they just don't get it. Yeah. They're not part of the culture, so they don't get a lot of my stuff. But then I was cause he he has a primarily black crowd, a lot of them are older, and I'm like, okay, it's just a lot of it's Pittsburgh culture in general. Mm-hmm. But like, okay, and so speak on that. Because actually, like I checked the demographics of the show, most people who listen to this are not from Pittsburgh. Word. Yeah, yeah. So explain what you mean by like that Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh crowd culture thing. So like Pittsburgh has a very <laughs> no matter the age group, Pittsburgh has a very uh, very old mentality. A lot of them yeah. are still mm-hmm. stuck like twenty years ago, yeah, twenty yes. years plus. Yeah. Even the younger people, I have twenty four and twenty five year olds tell me they don't know how to use social media and it's stupid. I'm like what? you're a fucking idiot, <laughs> <laughs> especially because you're trying to be an entertainer. You're an idiot. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's like so. There's people like that. A lot of people like that in Pittsburgh, and then so if 24, 25 year olds are like that. How do you like the audience? You can mm-hmm. basically assume how like the forty plus crowd is yeah, going to be. For sure. And uh, so it's basically just a lot of that. A lot of people here are very simple minded um, with their senses of humor. They mm-hmm. like the most simplistic jokes. Or yeah, they like like dick jokes and. It's not even like there's nothing even wrong with dick jokes. It's the hack ones. They, well, you know, that's what I mean. Yeah, it's like man, my my dick is little or my pussy stinks. Like yeah. and they fucking mm-hmm. love it. It's 
they <laughs> I, there's a joke specifically. I don't mean to throw her under the bus. Oh, God. I'm not gonna say her name. <laughs> Let's but, go. Let's go. But, That's why I waited but, for it. Miss, I'm sorry. This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard for stand up. And I've heard some pretty dumb shit. I was in New York. This dude had cig- five cigarettes in between each of his fingers, and he was just smoking them, saying "Oh right, oh right," <laughs> for five minutes at the Green Lantern. <laughs> and this shit was dumber than that. Mm-hmm. So she she has this joke. <laughs> Where she's like, she's local too. <laughs> like, I feel terrible. That's what I'm not supposed to say her name. <laughs> she's like, you guys know what a Pittsburgh hello is? Oh, and the God. crowd's like, no. She's like, okay, well, Pittsburgh hello is whenever you take you take a shit and the shit hits the water and the water splashes your butt. It's like, Pittsburgh hello. And then fucking old yens or white people, yeah. they go fucking crazy. <laughs> I'm like, this is the dumbest shit I've Jeez. ever fucking heard. Yeah. <laughs> this is terrible content. Yeah. And that's the kind of, like, that's an example for the viewers to, like, this is the kind Kind of stuff that they like, and yeah, like, like my first like five ten minutes was all like fat jokes about myself, and the first like three I ever like did on a stage it did well. I was like, oh, like, like <clears throat> I would feel bad to myself because even though it was like my first couple jokes, I know knew that they were a hack, but I was like, oh my god, they love this. Like Pittsburgh is hack. <laughs> yeah, like I figured it out immediately. Hack as fuck. Yeah. It's going to take time for Pittsburgh to become a New York or Chicago. Time. Or LA. It's They're going to take time. Man. It's going to take different dimensions. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> Doctor Strange got to come in and, <laughs> and, and, and start a continuum yeah. of some sort. <laughs> I think our comedy is trying, our comedy scene is trying to move in that direction. The mm-hmm. thing is, they're using the wrong people for it. Yes. Wow. They're, they're using very generic, safe people mm-hmm. instead of the people who are actually living that truth of the modern era. And so I think they're going about it the wrong way. They have the right idea, but they're just going about it in the wrong way. See, Joey's like this close from getting out of Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Like it's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. And so it's like I love that he's at this point where like he don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. Like he'll just like he'll, he'll be like, yeah, that shit's not good. Well, speaking on what you said, they're using they're using the safe people. You see how it how what happens when you're when you're too edgy. The Dave Chappelle's or the Bill well, Burr's. Or like you, just, you see what happens, though. Well, I, I think it, it all depends on how you put it. I I think Dave's problem is he has an older perspective from it, mm. and that's why there's an issue, because there's a comedian, Jack Knight, rest in peace. He would talk about things like that as mm-hmm. such, and people would allow it, because it's a, from a younger understanding perspective of people in our <laughs> age group and younger mm-hmm. to where we understand it, and we don't see a problem with it. But Dave... Per, per, Dave puts it in a way to where people in our age group and younger may have a difficulty of understanding. But shouldn't the people who are in like Dave's uh, like age range, his fandom, shouldn't they like get that comedy too? Like, like they shouldn't have to conform to like the new age comedy either. You know what I mean? Oh, I agree. Like everything should just have its own space. But the problem is that like the public sentiment is controlled by the newer generation. Hmm. It's not controlled by Dave generation. Yeah. I don't think it's controlled by Gen Z either. It's all the millennials. Well, that's I. I it's like the mid thirty millennial millennials. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, they being some pussies about everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like white women millennials are the pussiest people on earth. <laughs> <laughs> it, so Meanwhile, man. Gen Z girls are fucking savages. Facts. I always said like yeah. if the men from millennials could could like if they were put in the same generation as the women from Gen Z, mm-hmm. that'd have been a perfect match. Mm. And all the pussy ass women from the millennials was put with the pussy ass dudes from Gen Z, that'd be perfect. Uh-huh. Because like I remember, like, when I was coming up, like, to say I love you, like, to lie to a girl, like, I love you to fuck was, like, normal. Yeah. But now, like, if a Gen Z guy, like, is to say I love you to a girl, she'd be like, ew. Yeah, these bitches Like, you hard. fucking like, pussy. Like, sad, ugh. Man. I also think Dave's issue is that uh, part of it is that he's a lot bigger now than he was mm-hmm. in the 2000s to yeah. so where he's, like, a lot more mainstream, so he's getting more mainstream uh, kind sense. of audiences, too. Because, you know, I don't think people in their areas necessarily change too, too much. So, like, because, like, people from the hood now is same thing, like, pe- same way as they were 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. People in the hood still fuck with Dave. It's, like, mm-hmm. it's the yeah. more white people <laughs> that yeah. he's, he's yeah. getting, he's reaching now. Yeah from Netflix and stuff like that, that he wasn't reaching. Well, he also stopped doing it for a long time. But I think that's also playing a part is that he's just... He's becoming more gentrified? Basically, he doesn't want to be gentrified, but he has to be because of his level of fame now. His level of celebrity. Makes sense. Well, I feel like he's harsher now than he used to be. I agree. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I almost found like he was like, all right, shit is so soft now, so now there's a market for me to go hard as fuck. Mm-hmm. 
and like appease that crew. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, cause I mean, he he gets some like he'll do like uh some award shows and shit like that, but and I guess he'll do like SNL. But I mean, like it's not he's on like network TV or like big movies. Like you, you know, know what how I mean? smart he is though for putting for saying what Sticks and Stones was the one where he made fun of the entire community, correct? Yeah. yeah. You know how smart of a business That's what I'm move saying. that yeah. was. Like, because like, that that literally has him in the in the limelight still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That special. Like, so I think he knew. Like I said, he it, knew the idea of his stardom. He's like, well, I, I need to go harder. So he gets to a point where like he's to a point he's he has a message now. So I feel like I have an agenda. I want to put it out there. Right. And hopefully, I'm hoping he's thinking he's 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 going he's going to change what comedy is and what what it has become now. Yeah. Which is soft. I think it's bringing a lot of eyes to that mm. to that point. Yeah. And it's like I noticed like people like him and like Louis and like these big like really offensive comedians they never complain about. Like they'll call it out, but they don't complain about the cancel culture because right. I think they see it as like, look, this is we've never had a better opportunity ever to make comedy mm-hmm. because like now white thirty year old millennial women are making like all these sacred cows. Where it's like you can't talk about this, you can't talk about that. They're like, really? Well, hold my beard because yeah. like I'm gonna talk about all that, and now it's great comedy. Mm-hmm. Like it reminds me like Andrew Schultz. I I don't know where he was saying this, but he was saying that like. He lived in Miami during the pandemic. He's like, I had to move back to New York because life in Miami is so good. Mm. Like, there's, like, nothing to push Mm. back on. Mm. He's like, I need things to happen to me to, like, push back to make comedy. So it's like, like, now there's so many things to push back on for, like, guys like Louis and, you know, Andrew Schultz and... Mm -hmm. And Dave Chappelle and mm-hmm. Bill Burr and all these motherfuckers. That it's like for them, it's never bet it's never been better for comedy. Cause you can't fuck with them. Like they can fuck with us. Like if we went to like arcade comedy theater and said some wild shit, we'd get banned. I hate their demographic. <laughs> I hate it with a passion. Why why do you hate it? <laughs> because their demographic doesn't want anything with substance. <clears throat> okay. They want everything lighthearted. They don't want anything, any kind of joke that has any kind of struggle story behind it, struggle truth behind it. They just want all lighthearted bullshit. Like no uncomfortableness. Anything that would make them uncomfortable. That's what I mean. I should say. Yeah. But that's what comedy started out as. Like, right. The problems, the, all the, the, the that's shit literally what comedy life. is in yeah. general. Even when you're just fucking around in conversation, that's what it is. Yeah, they kind of like, I, I mean, okay, so here, here's a question. Do you think that they f- created that audience by the comedians they choose or they choose the comedians because they ended up with that audience. Okay, so here, here's here's the thing about Arcade. Because they use the same people over and over and over and over Yeah, over for sure, for yeah. sure. I think, okay, before I get into this, I think Arcade is genius for that. Right. Um, I'm not dogging because them. Because just... they are great at marketing for their image. Right. Mm-hmm. And so they use the same six comedians, but those comedians fit exactly what they want their establishment to be. Correct. Mm-hmm. So... I mean, can't be mad at them for that. I mean, you can, but you can't. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. But Arcade pre-pandemic was, in my opinion, the best room in the city. No contest. Improv didn't stand a chance with Arcade. Mm-hmm. Like, Arcade was hands down the best. Post-pandemic, I think, is whenever they uh, whenever they got tight and stuff. Because now they're forcing the the, vac- the cards and shit like that. And that's yeah. the crowd they're getting. Mm-hmm. Right. They're not getting uh, everyone yeah, they true. used to. Oh, they're getting more of an uptight crowd. Okay. That's yeah, they're getting more of an uptight wow. crowd now. And, wow. um, that's interesting. So, so, like, just splitting up into, like, vaccine and unvaccine groups, like, it narrowed down their comedy tastes. Well, okay, so this Arcade always had more of a suburban kind of crowd, people from the suburbs, people who may Even have a little bit more like money. Even though they're, like, right in downtown. Yeah, right. Yeah. But that was their that was their their consumer base. But yeah. um, now you cut off half of their consumer base were basically probably the suburban people who didn't have as much money, who didn't have it as good growing up. Those are probably the ones that got cut off because all of us are skeptical about the damn vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> so they got all the more but uppity when ones. When he says on. us, he means... Hood black folks and country white people. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> yeah, basically, that 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 was, that was really a time to end racism because they could have came together and like fuck these vaccines. Yeah, yeah. They're like, that's right, bro. <laughs> that's right, bro. And um, so basically, what I think happened is they cut off the people who actually struggle in their lives. Mm. And they, they kept the ones who came from some sort of entitlement, and that's why yeah. they pull back whenever they hear any kind of real stuff in the jokes. Man, so that's a good that's a good assessment. I like that. That's dope. It is kind of unfortunate for the scene, though, because, like, you take someone like myself, I don't even view it as, like, an option that I will perform there someday. Mm. I'm like, I know I won't because of my, 
like what I like to talk about in my style and stuff like that. It's like there's a lot of comics like that who it's like you're never ever going to perform there. So, but I mean, me as me as not being a not not a comedian and actually a consumer that listens to the shit. Like when you guys want to dirt, like the, when you when you're saying the things, I like that. Oh shit, that's crazy! Like that's the like that that kind of feeling that you saying some shit that probably wouldn't be said by a normal person. Right. Like right. that that dark deep shit is funny. It's funny as shit to me. Yeah. That's the whole that's the whole chuckle thing. I don't want to. Oh well, I was driving a car. And like oh, like I, I don't want that bullshit. Like no. That's Matt Light. Matt will never perform an arcade. Mm. Has he, he used to? Him? Yeah. He Matt used to. used to be down there, and he stopped getting booked. I don't know why, but. I think we just talked about why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he talks a lot of shit. <laughs> so, okay. Even though you're leaving, what do you think Pittsburgh has to do to, like, like give me, like, steps of, like, building the scene up? Like, okay. to, for, for the scene to get from where it is now to a viable, like, productive scene. I personally believe they need to cut the image bullshit or the politics bullshit out because they know a lot of the people they put on don't deserve to be on those stages. They're putting when them you on. say they, who do you mean? Like, when they... Uh, the, the people, people they... who run the scene, Arcade. Uh, improv. I was just about to say the Improv. <laughs> people are gonna hate me when they hear this. There's such a small pool of people. They're gonna know. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. They're not gonna fight me. <laughs> uh, Bottle Rocket. They're brand new. But but oh, so here's the thing about Bottle Rocket is but Bottle Rocket has a very niche image they're going for. So their club it's in the Dortmund, right? No, they moved. They moved. Oh, okay. Um, where, where are they at now? They're I just... up in. They're up and coming. I don't know where they're at. Shouts okay. out to them. I hope they. I hope they do good. Right. They have a very niche image. They're going like all as fuck. Yeah, but the comics that they have there are not. They're the farthest thing from alt. <laughs> mm. The openers, I should say, their headliners are alt as hell. But the openers that yeah, they're bringing in, that. the people that are, pro- that are producing, are the farthest thing from alt. Mm. So like, it doesn't really fit. But I mean, hey, that's that's what I mean by the politic bullshit. They want everything. They want their comics to be all. Everything's all happy. Okay, let me put it this way. There's a meme I saw years ago, <laughs> and I love this meme. It was a meme that it was, uh, I want to say it was from The Simpsons. It was a river that split on one side because it was like Lil Yachty fans versus 21 Savage fans. On <laughs> one side was rainbows and playgrounds. On the other side was a cemetery and just <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of just dead ass trees. Yeah. Our comedy scene and all the people, all the po- the mainstream politic people, they want it to look like the Lil Yachty side. They want everything to be uh. all roses, rainbows, and all that shit. Nobody has <laughs> substance and everything. It's like, look at me. I have a clean look and I have no substance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm single that's in 27. They, yeah, yeah, they. Yeah. that's what they want for us. Isn't that, that hilarious? <laughs> those are the comedians they book for mainstream. Those are the people who are the images. They have a bunch of hack-ass jokes that they don't really know what they're... And I, it's not... I'm not even trying to talk about them. I just... Like in a bad way, I just personally think they're not they're not ready to be receiving what they're getting. Hey guys, what's the deal with us putting fries and everything? But they're <laughs> also <I> right? <laughs> not learn. They don't even do that. <laughs> like, it's uh they're also not really learning because they're getting they're starting off too hot and people basically Ooh. hyping them up. They're like, you don't need to do this, you don't need to do these mics, you don't need to grind. I'm putting you on every weekend regardless because you fit. But they don't they're know getting, they're getting put on because they fit an image. Right. They, that's the thing. They're not following the rights of passage. Like you exactly. Have to, you have you're to, not you have to get bombed. You have to get yeah, you have to. Yeah. You're not you're not your steel ain't getting sharpened because you're not yeah. seeing other steel. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like you a gummy bear. You're yeah. seeing other gummy bears. You're just meshing together. Like you're trash. <laughs> so I yeah. hate to put it that way. I had an it's like you're not getting any bear. better. Me too. <laughs> 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 but it's like I don't want to call them trash because I don't think they're trash. I just don't think that they're ready hmm. to be getting what they're getting. And I think for Pittsburgh – to start flipping the comedy scene, I think they need to look that they need to look in that in the mirror in their face, and they need to realize that their their motivations are politics. Mm-hmm. It's, it's political, um, political. I can't think of. The word. <laughs> I can't think. It's of the like word. They, like the 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 uh, comedy shows in Pittsburgh are it's all politically echo motivated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and they need to look at that in the face, and when they do that, I think that's when things would actually change. Um, until then, things aren't really going to change. Hmm. But see, like, I agree with what you're saying, but then I try to be reasonable, like play devil's advocate and hit the other side, and I'm like, well, what, like, how can I expect the clubs, except for the improv, I'm just going to say, because the improv gets a very wide range of audiences, but, like, the arcade is just booking for what they get. Like, the guys who do VFWs, they're booking comics based on the people who they're going to be showing comedy to. It's like, I blame the city of Pittsburgh more. But like, see, there's not a lot of diversity of people. Like, there's, like, mm-hmm. people way over here and people way mm-hmm. over there, and that's kind of it. 
The thing about arcade is that not many people bomb at arcade. So regardless of style, not the many audience people bomb is nice. There. They are. They are. They're very giving, even though they liberal. They're very extremely. Yeah. <laughs> they pull back a hell of a lot. But yeah. even though they do pull back, it's still hard to bomb there. Mm. Um, arcade, arcade prided themselves at one point. Is pride a word? <laughs> they, <laughs> arcade used to pride themselves. Yeah. He's gonna take it on being a. Uh, they were for the scene. They're gonna develop talent. Mm. Meanwhile, they put the same people on. You're not mm. developing talent for the scene. You're not helping the scene. You're yeah, stagnant. You're, exactly. You're being gatekeepers. Yeah. And so I hate to use them examples, but they're the perfect example of what they used to be. Now they're they're I don't even think they're any better now. I hate to say it. But yeah. <laughs> they just yeah. got they just got a couple new faces that they're promoting with same shit, different faces. Yeah. Uh we need to hit the lottery and open a club. Yeah. That'd be dope as shit, man. And it's that easy. <laughs> That's like it. people. That's what I've noticed. What I've noticed when people in Pittsburgh, when when people in Pittsburgh's comedy scene realize that true diversity in comedy is not based off of skin color, but it's based off of your voice hmm. and your content. That is when shit will change. Hmm. Mm-hmm. But let's be real. Like okay, RK puts on a lot of uh, people of color, but not oh, the right. But for them, the right people of color. The like good, they don't the put on hood ones. people. The good ones. <laughs> That's what it was, by the way, Miles. Yeah, he said the, he good, said the good ones. Yeah, he was like you want yeah. the good ones. He's like, hey. <laughs> Fuck That's you, what man. Miles said. The good ones. The good ones, man. You piece of shit. But you know what I mean? Like there's hood shows, but they never perform in arcade, really. Nah, they don't bring the the hood. Com- I don't think we really truly have hood comics here. We have dumb comics, but we don't have. I don't think we really have hood comics. You're probably the hoodest comic. You do wear do right. You do wear do right. Huh? But I, I might be. <laughs> like I, I, I might be. I think the scene is kind of afraid of you. I'm not gonna lie. I think they are too. They I think they're afraid whatever. of you. They let me do whatever the fuck I want. They don't. They don't say anything to me. And you know what happened? You know what's crazy is because they used to. I was the one they bullied. Everyone in the scene used to bully me. I got into it. The old guard with though. a comedian. I got into it with a comedian who tries to be like the big bad guy of the scene. I told him I beat his ass. What's up? And after that happened, nobody fucked with me. Nobody. Not even him. He won't say shit to me now. <laughs> like, I'd be waiting for problems with him because he sneaked this as me, but he won't say shit to me. Like, I've talked to him about it. He's like, no, you're good. I'm not, I'm not talking about you. People, I, I think everyone's scared of me here, too. And that's a hilarious thing. I actually put my hands on a comedian. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, you said I, it. I did. I, I smacked that's the man. shit out of a comedian because he, because he. What's uh, his name? Tyler. Oh shit! Yeah, uh, <laughs> fucking oh, Andreas. O- outside of a mic. <laughs> yeah, it was like right outside the mic. Andreas said I smacked him and made him do the hokey Be- pokey. <laughs> <laughs> he called him a bitch. The Tyler called him a bitch, and he was like, "It's on site." It was okay, yeah. so it was like a month leading up to it, a month of bullshit. Then he called me a bitch, and I was like, "All right, <laughs> it was okay. It's, it's happening." You were very disrespectful. <laughs> Yeah, I, so yeah, I hate to because I don't like talking about beating people up or anything. But yeah, so I basically I I I be I, I decimated dude, and he he his lip apparently according to Andreas his lip was leaking, and according to him the next day he said he had a perforated eardrum. After like when I stopped hitting him, dude like got <laughs> situated because I beat him up in front of his mom. Dude, oh, his mom was there. I, I gave dude hands in front of his mom. I didn't know she was. <laughs> I got stomped out in front of my mom. So dude got situated. He was like, "You're very disrespectful, Joey," and walked away. <laughs> imagine, imagine getting peace the fuck up and being like, "That was very disrespectful." Who <laughs> <Right. laughs> <Boobus> this man <laughs> just walks away? <laughs> that, but that is like being Joey's friend. That's a hilarious thing because like all these comics will like chirp on Facebook and shit and mm-hmm. say stuff, but he'll go straight to like, "Well, I'll whoop your ass," <laughs> and they're just like. <laughs> Yeah. Just uh, silence. After, I would love to be a comedian. I would love somebody to take some shit to so me. It was after I got into it with dude and I told him because he just kept, he basically told me he beat me up and I was like, well, what's up then? And he, he was nothing. Mm-hmm. But I, the, the comic saw me do that. Then people left me alone. Then I made a status about crackheads a couple months later. Then a former crackhead in the scene came on my status mad tried to sub me on my status thought i wouldn't say nothing then i shit on his entire career and people people come like they stopped fucking with me completely after that 
And then uh, then there was Tyler, who I guess missed all of that. And Let's be real. It's not like it. you like beat the fuck out of him. It's like you slapped him up. But it wasn't like you weren't like put him in the hospital. So I want people to think like, <laughs> like, yeah, like no, mad dog. Them. Yeah, I just had like six or seven very precise punches to his face. <laughs> six or seven. <laughs> yeah, young Tyson over here. He, no, no, no. Okay, okay. So y'all, y'all about to get the because <laughs> I don't talk about this because I, I'm not I can't proud believe of you it. are. I'm not proud of it. So like, dude. Mm-hmm. So there was a brick wall behind him. I'm holding dude up by his shirt at one point. Like, he's, like, dead. I'm holding him up with my one arm <laughs> when I come into consciousness. I think I knocked him out, but I was just holding him up against the wall. I tried to, and, like, uh, lessen it by being, like, he slapped him up. But now he's like, whoa, he was unconscious for a while. <laughs> but yeah, ahead, <laughs> yeah I think I briefly <laughs> knocked the dude out. And whenever I came into it, dude's head was just like this, uh, hair going over his face. He's just like this. I'm literally holding him up against the wall. And yeah, Jeez. that's how that happened. But you, I feel like, because you never really like get mad, mad like that. No. But I feel like you hit a level and you just see red. Like you, if you feel a level of disrespect, Quip comes out. <laughs> and it is just, he, okay. Quip Town just takes out the so, spirit of Quip. So I wasn't going to do it. Like, that's the thing. I got in front of him and I was not going to do it because my girlfriend at the time was like, don't do it because you know how they'll look at you. The comedians, they won't want to put you on anything and all that. And I was like, you know what? You're right. So I was just going to talk to him. <laughs> I was going to have a small, strongly worded talk with him. And dude, <laughs> dude told me because I had flinched at him because like part of my mind was like, smack the fuck out of him. That's what you came here for. And part of my mind was like, nah, just chill out. So I had like a miscommunication. So I like I stepped and I pulled back, and he was like, you better not hit me, Joey. And then I just opened my shit and swung hard as fuck. And dude did like a, a 180, came back around. He was like, you're going to pay for this. And that's, and then I just felt something off my knuckles, and then I don't remember anything else. <laughs> and the great thing was it was, Mc, it was McKee's Rock, so no one even stopped to look. They just kept walking. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> like, stopped. This regular, regular like, McKee stuff. This mm-hmm. happens every day. <laughs> <laughs> if he would have never said you're gonna pay for this, he would have never got he it. If he would have just took the L, yeah, West Side Story. <laughs> but you know what? You did him a great service in his life <laughs> because up until that point, he was walking around with the notion that you're gonna say anything to anyone. Mm-hmm. And He's, now, for the rest of his life, he is gonna think before he speaks to people. He <laughs> thinks before he speaks, but he doesn't. He still doesn't understand why he got hit. I know that for a fact. Well, maybe if he sees this, he'll know. Well, then you can't, you can't, like you said, you can't just go around calling people. Uh, I mean, like I said, like we talked about this The B before. word is, is different. Well, see, that wasn't the first time. Like, so, like I said, it was a, literally a month of buildup for this to happen. And he already came out, my, came at me sideways once. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yo, calm down. Like, you're going to talk to the wrong person and they're going to do something. To, I didn't think it was going to be me. <laughs> Little did he know. I was, <laughs> I was just telling him like, calm down. Like be like, watch how you talk to people, dude. Mm-hmm. And so he was like, all right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I thought everything was cool. The next week came in my inbox. Like, why are you such a bitch? I didn't even do nothing. I was like, you know what? All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, I all wish right. I had one story like that. Where, like someone was like, bitch. I was like, hey, come on, man. Look at you. I know. Man, come on, man. Nobody is that fucking stupid. They say that shit, but then they run. And I can't catch them. Exactly. That's a problem. Exactly. You have any stories like that? Uh, yeah. And this is gonna sound very fat. And, and <laughs> very fat. Fuck, fuck you. <laughs> fuck you in advance. But I was in fucking. I was in high school, right? Long day. This is like, like after like this is like after like fourth period. I didn't eat breakfast, so I'm sitting. I'm sitting in line for lunch. Okay. God cuts in front of me. I said, like, <laughs> hey, this is just one guy who used to pick on me in school. I was like, man, uh, I, I couldn't stand this fucking guy. He how picked, old were you? I was, um, at that time, I, was like, I think like seventh grade. So I was like maybe like 13, 14. Okay. 14, 15 probably, yeah. Right? Okay. But, but I mean, I was, I was, I was, the guy cut in front of me. I said, man, what you doing? And don't, worry about, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it, man. And I, and I put him over. I was like, hey, what the fuck is you doing? Yeah. He, he swung at me. Ooh, so shit. I just, mm, I just I, 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 in the middle, in the middle, like and you know, I fucking school. I'm just, yeah. I hit him, <laughs> hit him two times, and he like he caught he caught me one time, and I I, I kind of stumbled over, but then he came back like he I guess he grabbed a tray where he was trying to swing at me, and I hit the tray and it smacked him in his head, and, it, and he bro- it broke his nose. Damn, wow. and he fell down like he was bleeding. Ooh. He's like, you fat, you fat motherfucker. Like, he's like, he was like, he was screaming. You know, yeah. like, all the tears in his eyes. Hey, you fat you motherfucker, fat, fat motherfucker. Yeah. And then, then that's, when, that's when the fucking security guard snatched me up. 
by the and then that then that was the the rep. I mean, after that, that was I was I was nobody really fucked with me after that. Yeah, and I, then, I used to get bullied all all after, up until then. You jumped over the lunch line, grabbed the school dry mashed potatoes, like there could only be one. <laughs> 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 it's fucking pizza day. <laughs> it was fucking crazy, man. Then my then, then and then I commenced to got my ass whooped for my father. Oh, your dad, <laughs> yeah, yeah, my your dad, dad was fucking, jazz. Like, really? Oh, but yeah. but you, was like your dad was like, what did your dad say to do instead? Nothing. It was just he just it was a no nonsense. My dad was a military. He was a no nonsense kind of guy. Yeah, but how are you supposed to handle that situation? <laughs> he still to this day don't know what the fuck he wanted me to do. It's just the way in life. You just had to take a whooping for that. That's it. Man. That's just what it was, man. Damn. It's a military drill sergeant and he liked to whip people's asses. I remember <laughs> I did go to this one kid's house named Zach one time and Zach was like fucking crazy. Like <laughs> like he was known to be crazy. Mm-hmm. Like he would hit his I remember one time we were walking and he was hitting his house. He was like six years old, hitting his house with a bat, like the side of his house with a bat. Just <laughs> <laughs> like, he was just yeah, fucking a lot of picked up aggression, nuts. man. And I was like 12, maybe. <laughs> no, 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 younger than that. I was probably 10. Mm-hmm. And we we're outside, like outside church. We went to the same church. Mm-hmm. And outside church, I, I remember I like, made fun of him. Like he had like curly hair or something. And I mm-hmm. started making fun of him. And he just. Like right in my fucking nose, I was like literally like ten or eleven years old. Just I was Did like, you drop? No, I was oh, just like, oh, shit, you hit me, <laughs> <laughs> you little fucker. Oh you yeah, little. dude, I didn't do shit. I could have. He was like half my size, but I didn't do shit. I was just like, yeah, because you know why? I didn't want to. I knew my mom was gonna catch Jeez, me hard if I did man. that, but. Yeah. Fuck that. I think that would have been worth it. I would have beat this little ass. Yeah, I had a lot of fucking pent up aggression. That's good. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. Fuck yeah. You had a lot of pent up aggression. What, what, what do you think that stems from? Uh, it's just I, I think it's called fat teen aggression. That's like a, that's yeah. a thing. Like you yeah. just being picked on, not being not you just not want being girls to like for, you. Yeah, you want people to like yeah, you, yeah, girls yeah, like yeah, you. Yeah. Just anger, and then you know, that's yeah. what it is, man. You. I got a lot of pent up aggression too, <laughs> but I just don't. I don't. Yeah, Were you a chubby <laughs> kid growing up? Yeah, I was a little chubby. I wouldn't say I wouldn't say any of my pent up aggression comes from that period of my life, though. Really. Yeah, no, nah, it, it all comes from the stand-up comedy period of my life. Because <laughs> I never, I was never the type to get mad all the time. Like I, I have a very like it. It takes a lot to really bother me. Yeah, mm. it doesn't and take me much at all. It, it it takes like it. It doesn't take much to like get a small reaction out of me, but mm-hmm. to really bother me, it takes a lot. Yeah, and uh, comedians, yeah, they they pushed all the buttons <laughs> for over years. I see that. And yeah. it, it they just keep getting pushed, so I just get angry well. Like people don't day. realize this either is like you came, you started a couple years before me, like two or three years before me, mm-hmm. at a time when like gatekeeping was hard was huge in Pittsburgh. In here. Like like there was a group of people who ran Pittsburgh, and all they did was run the scene and rape. That's the only two things hey, they did. That is true. They it's, ran the scene and they raped. So <laughs> they did. That's so true. It's no am, am I, am I lying? There's no cap in that statement. Okay, so I'm like, not gonna say. Okay, I'm not gonna say all of them raped. There was one specifically who. No, raped but as a group, like, hard... actually raped people. Listen, like, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, no, no. Okay, so listen, this is what happened. So Shit. he raped. He raped another comic's friend, and then that comic's friend was saying, "If you, <laughs> if you touch a stage again, I'm telling everybody." And, uh, he and his away. name was Louis C.K. <laughs> <laughs> He's a tall ginger fuck. Um, <laughs> kind of looks like. No, he doesn't. But any, <laughs> people did used to call him like the. He he had some sort of tie with Louis here. Oh, yeah. Oh, so oh, th- this he wrote comic a letter. Or some no, 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 shit like no, that. no. This comic when Louis was coming to Pittsburgh, he was like supposed to open or like for another show or something like that, and. He canceled last second and fucked. He was almost fucked up Louis' show, right? I, I know. I thought he and wasn't then, even on the show. I heard he wasn't even on the show. But yeah, it was a different show. But then like the newspaper picked up and people started like protesting Louis' thing. Oh, yeah. And then what's that fucking uh, that one comment? She got no tits. Nataro. Take Nataro, yeah, because she had breast cancer. It's very sad. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm not trying to make a joke. I just no, that's how I Nataro that's how I identify her in my mind. But she was like, yeah, like fuck Louis, and picked him up to like feature for him. And then she, her. and then Tig dropped him. I think. Oh really? I, I think Tig uh, dropped him because something happened, and she found out about it, and she dropped him. I, I believe that's what happened. She's like, ah, 
You hate Louie, but you also rape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he <laughs> dude, dude tatted his, like, he changed his entire look. He tatted his arms all the way up and everything. Uh, he's trying to make sure, like, he, he is he still in the community? Game? No. Yeah, he still does it. He's just in the Midwest he moved. now. Yeah, yeah he's like in Milwaukee Midwest. or some shit. I, I ain't going to put all that out oh, there. My bad. But Whatever. <laughs> Milwaukee's a big place. You rape people, you rape people. Fuck you, man. It's, I mean, it's well, allegedly. It's just allegedly. not, yeah, it's alleged. Yeah. I, I, it ain't none of my business. Is what I heard. That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I ain't seen it. <laughs> but, I ain't yeah. seen it. <laughs> um, yeah. So you think, oh, yeah, but the point in bringing that up was they would, like, in the mics, like, they would control, like, who went at what time. Mm-hmm. And there was open mics who would have, like, there'd be a 50, 60 comics that's fucking open mics. Jeez. And they would put him and my our other buddy, Andreas, at the very end of that mic all the fucking time. Up until the pandemic happened. Literally, up until the pandemic happened, they had us at the end. Okay, so what, what happened with Andreas is a couple months before the pandemic, Andreas was getting bumped to the middle. Andreas hasn't been on this podcast yet, but he will. He's a, he's a funny dude from Pittsburgh. I think you can tell me about him. I think so. Yeah. And he, um, I was still towards the end, though, when the pandemic hit. They, they tried to, it, it has been confirmed from someone in their group that they tried to make me and Andreas quit. Really? Yeah, it was confirmed from someone in their group. But that's what, like, that's what the Pittsburgh... Like comedy scenes coming from like people are like, wow, like no one ever blows up from Pittsburgh. It's like, yeah, dude. That's the origin story. It's, why it's, Pittsburgh is. It's hilarious. They they tried to make Andreas and I quit. Meanwhile, I'm the most relevant comedian in this scene right now, mm-hmm. and uh, Andreas got his. Uh, he got um some big stuff that he does too as well. Yeah, he acts and shit. He's very relevant in comedy on a national on a regional scale from the Northeast to the Midwest. Who does more spots than him? No one. In Pittsburgh? No one. Nah, I don't think so. Yeah, he does the most. Anyone. Nah. <clears throat> but yeah. That's the thing. Like, I mean, I do this. I love doing this. And it's like, I well, now that I have a job, I could do more stand-up. But it's like, sometimes, like, if you let it, it just gets so, like, discouraging, like, the scene itself. Because it's like, oh, where do you even go for, like... Like, when you're doing this in the Pittsburgh, it's like, where do you even go from here? It's like, you have to fucking leave. You have to. You have to leave. So that's why I don't really perform here anymore. I If I do perform, I perform outside of the state. Yeah. Uh, but my car is fucked up, so I haven't been doing that. But <laughs> Dude, you should talk about THC. Here? No, your show, just in general. Like, right here? No, outside. and I, Like, yeah, here, right now. But Why? Because then if whenever you do a show somewhere, then people can be more aware about it. You're gonna That's do it true. Places. I actually, THC has got picked up in L.A. right now. So um, we're actually taking it to L.A. in October. L.A. is actually the second biggest uh, group that listens to this. Word. Yeah, oh, so dang. all you L.A. niggas, I'm going to be out there in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be out there in L.A. I'm actually at the Laugh Factory on the 16th, which is Shit. the third Sunday. Uh, and... THC is coming on either the 13th. Of the, I'm talking to the club on the 13th or the 14th. We haven't finalized which one of those days yet, but one of those days will be getting finalized within the next two weeks. So uh, that is the second Thursday or the second Friday, the 13th or the 14th. You can follow me on Instagram at Joey Purse to see further details for that. THC, we do give away edibles at that show, so mm. y'all should come through. Yeah, but like, tell them about the show. It, it's a fucking dope-ass concept for a show. There ain't nothing like this else in America. So basically... On THC, we uh, it's small lineup. Three comedians go up. Mm-hmm. Three comedians go up and perform. And then after the three comedians, uh, the audience votes on which comedian they want to see do a five minute improv set off of a topic that they choose. Well, the the comedians choose from the audience. So basically, what happens is, whenever they vote for the comedian to come up, the comedian comes back up, and then they'll throw topics at the comedian and the comedian will choose one of the topics and whoever's topic he chooses that person wins the edible arrangement Mm. edible arrangement (laughs) giveaway and uh but they the the catch is they're high off of liquid thc Mm. um before prior to that so everyone takes liquid thc before they're set so it's hitting by that time and they do five minutes improv and then after that uh, high as fuck. Yeah, high as Jeez. shit. Jeez. And after that, a Draft closer. Pussy. <laughs> after that, a closer comes on, closes out the show. Yeah, that's so a fucking great like idea. Fun. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of like comics who go up high, but it's like ironically high. But mm-hmm. this is like, no, no, you have to be good despite being high yeah. as fuck. Like, I, I've I've actually never seen it. I want to go. 
it. Oh, I've Mihai. been trying to bring LA. it. Me high? Uh, the, the, doing a set. That'd be fucking hilarious. It's not good. I've tried. <laughs> it goes horrible. I've been trying to bring it to Pittsburgh, but we haven't. There's no venues. I know. Yeah, no venues to bring it. Nobody wants to pick it up here. Bottle Rocket didn't want to do it? Bottle Rocket tried to change the idea. Uh, okay. But I don't think... I don't. I would love to work with Bottle Rocket, but I don't think our, I don't think our styles fit. Mm. I would say that. Mm. I don't think our styles fit. And I don't think their audience would. I don't think we fit. See, it's funny that you view them as alt because I view them as like main. Like I view what was alt fifteen years ago as mainstream now. Mm. Like I view like like Andrew Schultz and Louis. They're alt. Like they are they, they really. Dude, they had to sell their specials themselves on their own website. They couldn't even get a streamer to pick the shit up. So I, I would, I would assume they're more mainstream. I see. I... But wouldn't it be the indie thing, like the alt thing to do to be putting it on, on? Like, wouldn't Netflix be the most mainstream there is? But like all the alt comics get Netflix specials now. I do think alt is mainstream, but I, I think it's okay. So I don't know how to put this without. Sounding judgy or weird. Judge. Or judgy. Mm-hmm. Judge. I don't respect the comedians that Bottle Rocket brings in for uh, closers. It's, Why? It's not that I don't respect them. I just don't see any kind of humor in what they do. So their sense of humor is like the opposite of mine. I see that as like that. Because like mainstream is like the clubby people. Uh, my family this. My dog that. Like it's all the safe, relatable stuff. Mainstream's typically like those people, the be- the guys who are typically in the mainstream clubs. I see the people who take on the pianos on the stage and they tell jokes and stuff like yeah. that. Like that's that stuff's like the alt stuff. Mm. But and I think there's subdivisions though. Like I was thinking about this today. This is how I view it. Um, like I think there's like a mainstream alt, and then there's alt alt, which I believe there's differences too. Like mainstream alt would be like Louis or Andrew Scholes, or even on a local scale would be like Chris Scriva, me. Okay. Uh, but like alt alt would be Joe not Esch. funny. Oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. no, like I think I think Joe Esh is the closest thing we have here that is alt alt, and I I think Joe is actually very funny, but he just he does do some things out of the blue, like he has an act out where he he puts makeup on his face. See that, and it's like a magician thing and it's it's very different but it works for him yeah, like i think stuff like that is like like alt to a t mm. yeah, but man. then when you have people like different uh, strokes <laughs> different Fucking strokes for up. different bitches anyways <laughs> so <laughs> uh, i think like chris me and chris we have different styles as to where chris is like more of a crowd worky guy in and out of jokes i i am like a younger perspective a younger style of telling jokes mm. um it's more like mainstream alt which i personally believe our two styles will become the new mainstream whenever in a couple years with andrew show people like andrew louie and other yeah other jack knight would have been up there too but he the, the, the savagery is coming but, back yeah exactly it's the savagery back. is coming back <laughs> yeah thank christ and i think that kind of alt's gonna be like the mainstream in a few years but that's just how i view it anyhow uh yeah everyone views it differently but yeah that's what i view as like alt alt so I, I feel that but that's what i also mean by bottle rocket has their their openers i don't think they're picking the right people because they're they're picking the more mainstream people to open for their alt openers they got corinne fisher's coming she's a pretty good name but she's alt. she's like yeah, everyone they do is alt. yeah 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 yeah. i literally try to do shows with them i said i'll bring you headliners they're like we're not interested in anything you do they literally said that we're not interested in anything you Jeez, do and i was wait, like what did you do yeah though? yeah they um that's how they are Fuck they man. just didn't want his kind of headliners funny people all. they didn't want funny people they want <laughs> they want people who are going to shove marbles up their ass and be like ta-da it's like no, how about jokes sorry that's okay <laughs> this has been 55 minutes of talking about fucking <laughs> comedy basically. ryan pull up right this has been ryan's easiest episode of all time by the way one fucking thing <laughs> ryan pull up that um monkey pox thing in atlanta uh, uh, magic city we talked about this three times before the fucking show. Monkey pox in Atlanta, gays and women. <laughs> For uh, Christ. Shit, that's hilarious. Yeah, monkey pox cases are skyrocketing. By the way, is, is monkey pox, do people die from that shit? I have no fucking clue. What no is clue. monkey pox? It sounds racist. <laughs> Can we just say that? Yeah, well, of course, man. Yeah, okay. 
Especially being in Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> Do you want me somehow, to put this up? Somehow, some way. Was that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> put it up. Uh, oh, wait, no. I want to. There's one about gays and women's. What was it on Media Takeout? Yeah, Media Takeout or Shade Rub, like Media Takeout, yeah. Uh, what type of Media Takeout there? <laughs> <laughs> I think Ryan takes everything the first time it's said as a suggestion. Uh, yeah, He's like, yeah, yeah, that might be cool. There you go. Yeah, I love ATO. With uh-huh. the peach. With the peach, nigga. I wonder, because like, Atlanta became like a fucking, it became a, like a haven for gay dudes. I wonder how that oh. happened, because it's also like a super gangster place. It's, it's, but I, I, that's a very, I, I have no fucking clue. I have hey, no clue. Gay dudes can be gangsters too. Yeah, very true. Very, very true. You ever heard, <laughs> never mind. There's a rapper. <laughs> like, there's a rapper. Okay, this is the rapper's name. Mm-hmm. The rapper's name, I didn't name him. The rapper's name is Gangsta Fag. He's a rapper. He's a real rapper. He talks about fucking straight dudes and their children's beds. Okay. He's a real rapper. We can look him up. I don't want to do that. It's hilarious. <laughs> that is wild. He, he's hilarious. <laughs> The and he's really a gay dude who's also a gangster. If, okay, if you're getting piped in your kids, yeah, like what the fuck? Yeah, he's like, yeah, yeah, bro. You need to reevaluate. And, 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 and the chorus, the chorus, he wants it. What the fuck? If you've seen one ass, then you've seen them all. It's a great song. I don't want to see the ass. <laughs> imagine that. coming home from school. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Daddy, why are my dad. sheets all ruffled? <laughs> and smell of man. <laughs> in your bed. That's disgusting. Son. You can't be my dad no, no more. But no, that's it. No, no. I disown you. I'm my own man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I own this house now. <laughs> right. Yeah, you, you are my second mommy, dad. <laughs> right. Mommy, dad. <laughs> all right, scroll down. Um... Okay, so it's vaccines. Clapped in my bed. Why? <laughs> Don't you ever raise your voice at me. <laughs> we should really... Okay, after this, we're going to look at that song. Oh, God. <laughs> um, uh, go down. I want to see why the gay dudes are giving it to women or vice versa. Oh, May Move... Okay, Media Takeout learned that many women in Atlanta are now fearful of monkeypox, monkey pox, which can be translated or transmitted sexually. May Move from the gay community... Onto straight black women who have sex with Told bisexual you. men. Told you. Ah. They're in there, man. Interesting. They are in there, huh? Interesting. So, monkeypox is an STD? Apparently, now, man. I thought it was airborne. I, I thought it was like I chicken pox. Fuck. I have no. I know they come big ass boils. That's all I've seen big ass boils on you. They never really went into depth, like what the, where this, where the origin came from. I have no clue what the fuck's going on. I think somebody said you, 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 had, you had somebody had, um, I guess they were in. Interacting with monkeys, and then all of a sudden, now you have monkeypox. Now, there's a bunch of monkeys that are like itching. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the <laughs> fuck's going on. Humans, got it. Listen to this. According to CDC, nearly all black women who are newly infected with the HIV are infected either through intravenous uh, drug use or or butt sex. I'm sorry, intravenous drug use of heterosexual contact. Eighty percent. By contrast, the CDC reports that nearly seventy-three percent of all black men—I don't know why black—newly infected contract the disease through homosexual contact or drug <laughs> use. So they're saying if you're if you're if you're a dude, you get HIV, you're fucking gay. But if you're a <laughs> woman, much. if you're a woman and you got it, it's because your dude's fucking gay. You know what? <laughs> Straight black women <laughs> are about to hate by men even fucking more. <laughs> even more. Even like, more. It's a new age, man. Like, it's like, ATL, is, is, I think there's a lot of pimping and hoes going around, backpaging, and like, it's 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 becoming like LA, but like, it's it's like brothels, and people fucking everywhere. Like, it's Atlanta's just what wild. it is. It's like, it, and like, that's the thing, Atlanta, the gays are known in Atlanta, like, this is, this is what the fuck we, this is what we are, this is what it is. Right. So motherfuckers who got guys who pretend to be straight or whatever, they, they act like they hate gays, but they go down there for a weekend and go on a fucking yeah. rampage of fucking guys yeah. and come back straight like, oh, well, fuck the fuck. It's like, no, nah, yeah. this is what you're into. Right. Like, don't lie about it. <laughs> and then you spreading shit. He man. literally mean fuck those faggots. <laughs> he literally yeah, did that. Literally. <laughs> literally. Here's how the CDC claims that monkeypox is transmitted. Oral and oral, anal and vaginal sex or touching the genitals, penis, <laughs> testicles, labia, okay. and vagina or anus butthole a person <laughs> with monkeypox. That was very hard to read with yeah. all these fucking aspects. Yeah. <laughs> That was like, yeah, man. Okay. Kissing prolonged face to face constant. Jesus, ways, man. 
Monkey pox is fucking dirty. Deadly, man. How, how does monkey pox look? Can we look that up? See how those monkey pox look? Nah, I'm not. Uh, Here we it's, go. It's too, <laughs> much, just, too, much, stop, too much of a black please, joke. Stop, I can't. Yeah, just stop, like, yeah I can't. I know what you're going to say. I kind of have an idea. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm just saying it is ironic that it's mostly black people getting it. I'm, I'm not saying who named it. I'm just saying it's <laughs> it's odd. Oh, that's fucked up. I didn't think of it like that. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Man. Ew, that's like, disgusting, bro. There's some, there's some fucking like inbred, uh, inbred white people in Georgia <laughs> like, it's that goddamn monkey pox. Ew. You see the brown hand one that's right on the, on the bottom that's of the screen? Disgusting. Fuck it, hey. Look at that shit, man. Jesus Christ. Good God. Do the people need to see this? Sure. I mean, if you want to, hey. Sure. Oh, open up their minds to this box. Just a monkey sure. box. Shit. Fuck it. I that's know. like, that's like, uh, like it's basically the chicken box on steroids. Oh, yeah. look at that little, oh, look at that little kid all over his face. I feel like a. some of this is fake. You think? Yeah. Tell the people who have the box on. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you're faking this. <laughs> it is not fake. It is not the fake. Boils busted on their faces. Yeah, just, uh, trust me. Yeah. When did you you ever- are a liar. It is not <laughs> fake. <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, you cut the shit out. This is disgusting. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, God bless him, man. Hopefully, oh, Holy Lord. fuck. Jeez. Oh, that's smallpox. Yeah, oh. that. That's smallpox. That's smallpox. Yeah, 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 that's that, How are y'all looking at this? God, this is disgusting. Really? That guy's got hand Jeez. herpes. Okay, get the shit off. <laughs> He's jacked off. That's bro. hand herpes. That's yeah. If I know hand herpes, that's hand herpes. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Good God, man. That is uh yeah. I'm not um, dumb. You know, Daniel that's Tosh so about STDs, Daniel Tosh had the best bit of, bit of all time. Mm-hmm. He's like, the majority of STDs are curable within a week. With antibiotics, mm. so he's like, if the entire world could stop having sex for one week, <laughs> we would cure most STDs yeah, forever. That's, that's crazy. And now they got they got things for HIV. The start the start really that like really sense. taking effect of it. Actually, yeah. Look at Magic hey, Johnson. That, I was gonna say Ben had. Well, that. Magic Johnson, yeah. he, he was rich, so he he had he yeah. had resources. Yeah, he had he had HIV. HIV in quotations. He had HIV. <laughs> HIV. <laughs> <laughs> But Charlie Sheen, Charlie Sheen's fucking everyone yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you had that. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. He, they can get it so low that you can literally fuck people and not you won't transmit it. Hey, you guys want to? <laughs> you guys want to do something that I never heard seen? This is so a weird Chris, thing to say. Rather we talk yeah, about right? Chris, so so Chris, <laughs> Chris just called me. Okay, and I declined it. And I'm like, I'm in a podcast, and he's like, we're trying to interview you. Can we cross over and call? You I'm guys want to? You guys want to like just like put him on the podcast? Mic? V podcast. Put him on the mic. Let's out podcast his podcast. Let's <laughs> <laughs> so Let's out po- podcast his podcast. Po-man? No, Chris Scriva. Um, this is uh, fuck. Hey, you here? Yeah, we're 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 on the pod. We're on air. What's up? Dude, we're on air too. We were gonna try to call you and talk about beating the shit out of comedians. <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about that. We, we just talked about that, Chris. Let me figure out how to call in. We're gonna Bluetooth in and we're gonna call you guys. All right. All okay. right. You can record it. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, so uh, you, you're gonna put it on speaker or whatever. We're gonna have uh, Ryan call you. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Fuck. Answer the phone. It's gonna be comedian Chris over. Griva. All right. Okay. <laughs> Two Hot Girls podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. We need that kind of technology. I would love to start doing crank calls. Yeah, we need a. I, I know what we need to get. We just need to get it. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Dope. That's uh. Oh, that's fucking hilarious, Chris. <laughs> I, I was gonna try to have Chris on next week. So, so am I the fucking plug for beating up comedians? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, dude. The fuck? You, you need it to have only a brand. one. It was only one. You are the Debo of comedians. I'm the Debo of Pittsburgh comedy. <laughs> you know what's funny is because Chris. So apparently whenever I smacked dude, the shit got out to Chicago scene. Oh shit. And Chris was like, people respect the fuck out of me out there. I'm like a legend out there. <laughs> because they want to smack people out there, but they don't do it. So like, that's Why like not? every comedian though. Chief that's keeps like out scene. there. Bitches love Joey. <laughs> 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 smacking all these haters. <laughs> Am I just about to be known for smacking a comedian? You need over to make a pandemic? brand called These Hands. Yeah. Like you yeah. make do rags, but at the end of the do rags is little hands. Catch <laughs> <laughs> these hands. That's seriously. I, if if you had a these hands do rag, I would wear that shit. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I really hope he doesn't like. <laughs> Use this as evidence or some shit. That was too long ago. Nah, it should be fine, man. Statues of limitation. Yeah. 
Here we are. What the fuck? He call you? Two hot girls. Chris, so the guy he's talking to, I think he's going to be on here next week. Mm-hmm. He's, he's a funny ass dude. He called, but it said call ended. We gonna, like although he's like big like us, mm-hmm. we're going to have to fucking expand this room somehow. <laughs> three of There's us. Four in cameras in this room. <laughs> <laughs> three, three people, four cameras. <laughs> That's hilarious. I wonder who they're talking about beating up. Who knows? <laughs> Fuck. Oh, he's out in Chicago, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay. The fuck does he want me talking about being a comedian for? God damn. We already did that. Right. Mm-hmm. Fuck. So the, the the piece that we need, we just got to like have a, like a, a cell phone jack to hook up to the... No, we need a piece we uh, a, a piece of equipment. They got something called Roadcaster Pro mm-hmm. that like it has a Bluetooth thing in it. Oh, God. <clears throat> we, we, there's a different kind of one I want to get, but it's like that, like where you could have an input where people call... And so, it, like, it, it, the audio would just run through. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You know, it's actually illegal to prank call. Really? Really? Y- yeah. To air it. You can't, oh. like, you have to let people know that they're on the air. Like, you can, can you do that at the end? Oh, they're FaceTime. No. They, you need to tell them up front. Oh, so, if you air it and they're like, I didn't want to do this. Yeah. Hold up. Give us a second. Yo. Yo. Don't show me. Where's that? Where's what at? Yeah. I'm talking to Ryan. It's supposed to be, uh, oh, it's going to come up on the computer. Hold on. We're going to try to see you guys. Dude, we were just talking about how you beat the shit out of people. <laughs> Chris, we literally just talked about that, and we use names. Dude, there's really? Because, yeah, because Ryan goes, we're talking about our one buddy, Max, with us, uh, Max Neffert, and he uh, and he said, like, yeah, he's talking about beating the shit out of comedians. Because I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. And then Ryan goes, oh, yeah, Joey Perth, oh, yeah, you have Dude, we have two comedians that have fought other comedians. <laughs> <laughs> They're all the way out in Pittsburgh, and Joey's name rings out. Yeah, dude, can, can you see us? Yeah. That's fucking nuts. This is a cross podcast on complete accident, dude. Yeah, this is like the Jetsons and the Flintstones. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. This is a real comedy fight club. This is like when the uh, Fairly Odd Parents met Jimmy Neutron. This is yeah, fucking epic. But- <laughs> I've, been, I've been thinking about this idea for a roast where uh, it's like a roast battle, but it's people that hate each other, and then you each have like four jokes against each other, and then you bare knuckle box in the middle of a pit, Jeez. and then whoever wins the fight wins the roast. Right? The I like that. Oh, yeah. I'll watch it. I'll Although all it. the big comics are going to win. <laughs> yeah, all the big, <laughs> big fist guys are going to win. They're like, you need 18 <laughs> jokes. I need one. <laughs> <laughs> and a right hook. You know, dude, mm-hmm. the, the dude Joey went after was bigger than him. Well, no, he was like 102 pounds. He was yeah, but he had a bigger <laughs> yeah. He's tall, though. He's tall. He's lanky. He's, he's, got, he's got leverage. Yeah. <laughs> I, heard, I heard Joey's like, I slapped the shit out of him. And everybody goes, no, dude. It was like a mafia beat town. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, you were trying to put it lightly. He's talking real I shit. know. I was trying to soften it up, and mm-hmm. Joe was like, I think I knocked him out for a second. <laughs> <laughs> then, hey, dude, uh, so Mac, uh, tell him about your attack. Oh, no, I just, I just, uh, me and this kid, Bob Keen, fun in an alley. Uh, but uh, most comics don't fuck with me because I'm the only comic in Chicago with a gun, you know? <laughs> <laughs> On his podcast, he points at you for real. Yeah, the Glock 19. Glock you pull the Glock out on a comic. Yeah, he pulled it out. Of- oh, look! <laughs> <laughs> I pull up every comic that goes on my podcast. <laughs> In Chicago. Yeah, dude. It's I mean, fucking dude, this guy I mean, and Chief Keef. <laughs> yeah. It's a decent style podcasting. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same gang as Steve Keith. I'm a black disciple. Wait, Chris, who, Chris, who's everyone? Like, mention everyone's name over there. Who, who are you all with? Ryan. We got Ryan Guerrero in the middle. Max Epper. And then we got Chris Greva over here. Mm. All the way from the future. <laughs> on the internet. Look at this shit, dude. Actually, you guys are actually, you, you're in the past. You're an hour behind us. Hmm. Yeah, we're not. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you guys are in the future. Welcome back to the past. Yeah. Welcome back to the future. 
By the way, this is this is hilarious because this is so organic because we literally were like Joey. We were talking about Joey whipping a comic's ass, and then you guys just call and pre- like it's almost like we planned this like to to beef up Joey's image. <laughs> Bro, it's hilarious. Mac was like, "I fight comedian," and then Ryan was like, "No, Joey Perth fights comedian." <laughs> <laughs> oh, right no, Joey Perth fucking gang is comedian. Fucking rolls up with story. It sounds so funny, dude. Oh my god! You leave the fucking football game. I'm <laughs> oh, no. You're like, no. It's about the, it's about the principles. I I, I, I you left the football game. I le- okay, so what happened was, <laughs> I was at my sister's football game. It was in the playoffs, and so they could have lost, and it was it would have been her last game cheering at. There was six minutes left in the fourth quarter. My uh, my friend, my friend sent. He was like, "Yo, Tyler's here." I was like, "I was like, send proof, send a picture." He sent me a picture. I got up immediately and left. Drove thirty minutes away. <laughs> I drove thirty minutes down the river, and to keep myself, to keep myself focused and angry, I listened to drill music for the entire thirty minutes. <laughs> the Chicago drill. Yeah. I was like, "I'm not losing my anger. I'm beating the fuck out of him." <laughs> Chris actually That's called dedicated. me. I answered it, and Chris made me laugh. I had to get off the phone with him so I could be angry again. Because <laughs> I was like, this is happening. <laughs> By the way, that's the most mob shit to ever happen in the comedy world ever. Like, literally, someone's like, I see that boy walking right now. You're like, bet. God. <laughs> yeah. Drove so you minutes. just at the bottom, right? What? Huh? What's that? What's the what's the rest of the story if you don't mind keep telling it? So I drove thirty minutes to get to uh, to the open <laughs> mic because it was at an open mic. Uh, I'm at the open mic. I go in. I see a very close friend of mine, Andreas. And Andreas is like, yo, what's up, Joey? I was like, where's Tyler at? I didn't even say what's up. I was like, where's Tyler at? <laughs> Dude walks past me, and I walk. I follow him. I got him. <laughs> I uh, I follow him outside. I was like, yo, Tyler, so what was up with the messages? And he was like, what? I was like, why why are you calling me a bitch? I was like, what's that about? And he was like, you were being a pain in my ass. And then I like I flinched at him because I wanted to smack him, but my girlfriend at the time was telling me, don't don't touch him, just talk to him. And so I had like a little miscommunication thing going on. He was like, you better not touch me. And I opened my palm and I smacked the fuck out of him. And then he turned his yeah. he turned his head and then he was Hell like, yeah. <laughs> bro, five fingers separated. And then he, <laughs> and then he, uh, he turned his head around. He was like, you're going to pay for this. And then next thing I, I felt, my knuckles hit something and I blacked out. <laughs> You're gonna pay, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nobody messes with the perks, You don't grab me like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Face, <laughs> Joey treats comics like Sean Connery treats his women. So like, you gotta give him a little schmack. That rules. Yeah, what's a, a little schmack? Did his mom come running out? No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So his mom, his mom was witnessed the whole thing, and uh, so like, yeah, it happened right in front of his mom. Um, I almost did. I almost swung on his mom too, because what happened was, when I came into consciousness, I felt someone grabbing my shoulders. I wasn't moving. You you you, you, you went out. Of, you were unconscious while you did this. Yeah, like I was beating the fuck out. He saw <laughs> I red. Blocked dude. out, and so I, I came knew, into yeah. consciousness, and. Uh, it was like grayscale, like how on GTA when you die, like that's how I was seeing briefly. <laughs> and then um, so I felt Wasted. someone grabbing <laughs> my shoulder. That's how he was against the wall. <laughs> it was grabbing my shoulders, and all I hear is like, you monster, you monster. Because before I heard anything, though, I just heard ringing in my ears. I was going to swing, but I was like, no, because it's probably like a lady or something. Turns out it was his mom. So I almost like knocked his mom the fuck out. Bro, if you slapped You're his mother, monster. no, I was gonna sla- I was gonna slap her. I was gonna knock her the fuck out because I was about to swing with yeah, a fist and not a hand. Luckily, I didn't. <laughs> Luckily, I didn't because our whole family would have just took an L that yeah. night, and that's not what. <laughs> no, dude, you could have decimated the whole family. That would have... Yeah, like some medieval shit. <laughs> Chris, 
I'd give that a kick. But you call me a bitch, your whole family's done. Dude. <laughs> yeah. I don't tolerate the disrespect. Like mm-hmm. I'm the fucking cartel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were very man. disrespectful. Call, his, his name is Joey Chapo from that. <laughs> no, Chris. I said he's he's gonna start a brand called These Hands. And it's gonna be do rags. At the end of it, it's gonna be little hands at them. Now, is this completely incriminating? Like, you can get arrested for just saying all that on two podcasts at one time? Yeah, maybe. Well, like, <laughs> I don't know, it happened it, over a year ago. It'll only add to Joey's lore. Yeah. Oh, what's the, what's the, I thought that what's the, the statute of limitations like 15 years, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, police, this simple. never happened. This is all for entertainment. This is all a joke. This is all braggadocious. Yeah, all for entertainment. speaking. <laughs> I've incriminated myself a lot on my podcast. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's fine. What was your fight like, Mac? You didn't talk about it. Like, oh, it was retarded because we, uh, fucking, me and Bob Keen, we were at, we were at Cleo's, and then we were, like, just talking about shit. Then we went to the alley, and we were, like, circled around by, like, a bunch of comics, like Blake and Michael Myers. And Did nobody tried to stop that. No. They, uh, <laughs> well, we didn't want them to stop. We didn't want them to stop it either. We wanted a mano y mano. And, um, I don't know, we just started hitting each other, but like 15 seconds in, three cop cars pulled in. I think the bar, I think the bar called the cops on the fight, but, um, I got like two face shots in on him. He just got one in on me, but, uh, he was the one with, uh, marks on his face and I didn't. So it wasn't anything crazy, but I don't know. I threaten people all the time on my podcast and like. Yeah, dude, Max podcast. He named names. I, I talk, I talk shit openly and post it on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the only well, comic with a gun. I live for it. <laughs> right. That's why I appreciate. It. Like, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Him and Joe Rogan don't are the only two me. comics in the world with guns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the uh, that's what sets me apart from the podcast is that I have a gun on my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta get the fuck out of here. I gotta go to bed. I have an office job right. now. I do too. Yeah, me too. I like, oh, yeah. Well, what's what's your guys? What's your podcast? Give it a shout out here. It's the Corey Brennan Show. Oh yeah, C O R E N Corey. No, nope. check out the Corey it. Brennan Show. Shout out Corey Brennan. Corey Brennan Show. What's the other doing your podcast name again? Your buddy JB. JB South JB. Oh, shout out. Are you guys doing two? Are, are you guys doing two hot girls? Yeah, the yeah, two hot girls, girls podcast, 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 God, God. I hope you don't get arrested, Joey. All right. <laughs> God bless you. You're scary. Kevin. <laughs> All right. That was the first for us. That was our first was cross podcast. Hey, you guys know what the funniest part of that story is to me is that a TikToker did it. Yeah. <laughs> straight up TikToker. This dude, I mean, like, he's got over 100,000 on TikTok. Right, man. It is what it is. It doesn't matter. You can catch your hands anywhere you no, it is. The people yeah. be playing, people play TikTokers. <laughs> yeah, like people that are still human beings. They man. think shit's sweet on TikTok. Hey, they do. Come with these hands. They think shit's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is actually this is good times. Um thank you for listening, everyone. Mm-hmm. Joey, where can people find you at? Mm-hmm. Uh you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, at Joey Purse, Twitter at Joey Purse underscore. Um and when you if people in LA go see him at uh Laugh Factory, what is it? Uh it is October sixteenth, I want to say it's seven, and when okay. seven or eight, wow. and whenever he books his THC show out there, go out there and get high as fuck. It is California. You can smoke weed whenever the fuck you mm-hmm. want. I think babies can smoke weed. <laughs> um, aborted babies can smoke Jeez. weed in California. That's <laughs> fucking crazy. Um, you can follow me at um, I am Corey Brennan on Twitter and at Corey Brennan Comedy on um, Instagram and TikTok. Follow JB at JBizzleTCBS on. What's that? What's that what? little thing hey, called I, Twitter? Twitter. Um, hey, did I get a cool slide too? Oh yeah, yeah, he got you. Oh, one. Got you. Hey, thank you, Mister Brazilian. <laughs> Mr. Brazilian. <laughs> Mr. Brazilian. <laughs> all right, um, make sure to share the podcast, uh, like and uh, subscribe, all that mm-hmm. shit. Uh, like our fucking uh, what are those things called clips? Uh, we'll see you next time, next mm-hmm. week. Mm-hmm. Stay black. Stay black. Can't help it.
I'm gonna go sleep.